you are free to do business, earn tons of money, criticize all of us, but you will have to follow the constitution of India and the laws of India. The issue is between Twitter and the users of Twitter and other platforms who are suffering abuse and misuse and need a voice for the interest of everyone. You're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. The war between the center and Twitter continues to escalate over the new IT regulations. But this time, none other than the union IT minister, Ravi Shankar Prasad, got temporarily blocked from his own Twitter account. The notification the minister got on his Twitter page was that the platform received a DMCA notice which stands for Digital Millennium Copyright Act in connection to content posted on his account. It is a legal provision from the United States which prohibits the publishing of copyright content. Twitter also said that more such notices could result in relocking of the account or suspension as well. He must remove material he is not authorized to post and follow the copyright policy of the platform. The union minister was quick to respond, this time on the coup platform, where he said he was denied access to his account for an hour. Twitter's actions violated the new IT rules and there was no prior notice before he was blocked. The minister highlighted that all he did was post his own interview clips where he criticized Twitter and called out the platform for its high-handedness and arbitrary actions. He said his words have ruffled Twitter's feathers and the platform is resorting to blocking those who do not follow its agenda. He finished his long post by saying Twitter is against free speech and there will be no compromise on the new IT rules. Now Ravi Shankar Prasad has found an ally in Shashi Tharoor who took to Twitter ironically and said that as the chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on IT, he will seek an explanation from Twitter because his account was also temporarily blocked as well as the status of compliance to the new IT rules. Remember, Twitter has lost its legal shield for failure to comply with the IT regulations, which calls for active grievance redressal and content flagging mechanisms with the appointment of nodal officials. Remember, exactly a week ago, the panel pulled up Twitter for not complying with the new rules, seeing a unity between all parties. Twitter gave the excuse of the corona pandemic and the lockdown for the delay. The pressure continues to mount on Twitter because every other social media platform has adhered to the new rules. So why is Twitter dragging its feet and continuing this confrontationist stand with the center? Let me bring in my guests. Tuhin Sinha, spokesperson of the BJP. NS Napinai is an advocate and founder of Cyber Sathi. Jitin Jain is cyber expert. Ansh Luthra is advocate of Delhi High Court. Kanish Gaur is founder of India Future Foundation. I'm going to begin with you, Jitin Jain. It's about Digital Millennium Copyright Act of, two, of USA. In that context, shouldn't there be any prior intimation that is necessary before blocking access to accounts? So there are two things to it. A, the uh, you know the notice uh, sort of uh, intimation what Twitter is uh, was showing to Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad while blocking his account. They said due to repeated violations, their account has been locked out. So repeated violation means that violations may have happened in the past also. And if at all any violations were there, it was Twitter, Twitter's duty to inform him. And I confirm uh, from sources that Ravi Shankar Prasad's office or him personally, even today, till today, has not received any such intimidation or prior notification of any copyright violation from Twitter in the past or in the present. Hmm. That's number one. So, and second, as per the new IT rules, which have been already notified, you know, uh, three months back and have come into effect last month, for any such content, a third party content, copyright violation or anything what uh, people may claim, Twitter has to inform user before removing such content and has to give him a reasonable opportunity to be heard before mm -hmm. making such a you know decision. And this is the purpose that thousands and thousands of citizens face such harassment every day. That is why a grievance appointment, uh, the officer's appointment was necessitated, and they had they were forced to appoint a grievance officer in India 24 hours available for the citizens' complaint. Mm -hmm. Now number three, 
I think look at the audacity. A company, you know, Maria, we have this is these are digital East India companies. They want to bring in their own army laws. Hmm. Now that time has come, like East India company looted and plundered your uh, goods and used the same infrastructure like railways and roads built by them to take the stuff to UK and they ended up applying it. You know, Jitin, even as we speak, no, no, there British is, law in India. There is Today, an there is an on record statement that has come from Twitter in which they are saying that we can confirm that the Honorable Minister's account access was uh, temporarily restricted due to DMCA notice only and the referenced tweet has been withheld per our copyright policy. We respond to valid copyright complaints sent to us by copyright okay. owner or their authorized representatives. They are again so, emphasizing on copyright rules. I just want to understand more about that and Napin, I come in on this. Uh, rule 4.8, rule 4.8 of the newly notified IT rules 2021 clearly says that whenever a content that does not belong to the user is shared on a social media platform, the social media intermediary, which is Twitter in this particular case, shall ensure that prior to removing or disabling access, it has provided the user who has shared such a content with a notification explaining the action being taken and the grounds or reasons for such an action. In this case, it wasn't done. There is a fundamental problem here in the application of the Digital Millennium Copyrights Act. Every law of a land is limited to the municipal boundaries of that land. So we have similar copyright provisions in India also and therefore you have the protection under the intermediary guidelines also. So the issue, the first issue here is, can uh, DMCA be applied with respect to content that's being shared in India? There is an extraterritorial jurisdiction that they claim, but to what extent is it applicable and to what kind of content becomes relevant? Hmm. The second thing, <clears throat> again, when we are speaking about copyright, hmm. it's not as black and white as it would seem, as with everything in law, I would say, because copyright is not just about a negative right that stops somebody else from using my content, but it has certain exceptions in terms of fair use. Hmm. So we need to evaluate how and in what manner content has been shared and pertaining to copyright, which will apply from municipal laws. So if you are talking about copyright with respect to news media uh, capturing an interview and that pertains to Indian news media, it is the Indian law that applies and Twitter will have to necessarily apply the law of the land. It can't choose yes. which is the law that it will apply. Okay. And is finally, there... yes. the issue here also is the mm. mode and manner in our application and the timing of it. Yes. See, ultimately, last year, the all the social media platforms, including Twitter, were hauled up because they were violating or they were uh, uh, facilitating violation of print media's uh, copyright uh, in digitized versions. Now, today with uh, Twitter in a precarious situation where it has lost its uh, protection under the intermediary guidelines due to non-compliance, hmm. imagine the kind of copyright violations that happen on its platform. And without this immunity, they can be called upon to answer to each and everything in India. So that is why I am tagging it as a suicidal attempt for them to raise something like this without really thinking it through. Okay, so this is... Uh, you know, this platform continuing with its path of confrontation, a degree of brazenness as well, I would say, uh, again, uh, you know, before I bring in the politician, a word from Ansh. Ansh, this 4.8 doesn't have anything on copyright violations as well. And maybe there is need to give further clarity on this particular aspect of the rules. Thank you for having me on your program, Maria. I would uh, begin by saying that this is stepmotherly treatment by a US tech giant, which yields billions in users and revenue to save its skin under the US law by clearly flouting the Indian law, which is applicable here. And I heed to the jurisdictional issue. The Indian law is applicable. It's an Indian account. It's Indian tweets. Uh, the important question here is not of whose account. The Honorable Union Minister's rank is certainly not in question. The important question here is Twitter's action and the intent behind it. 
Now coming to rule 48 of the IT rules and uh, section 512G1 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which was enacted on 28th of October 1998 under which uh, uh, the Honorable Minister's account was blocked for about an hour. Let's try and compare the two. And I'll also come to, I'll also come to the issue of clarity that you raised, whether these rules should be further clarified or not. But let's first compare the two. In, I, and I think the Indian law is more humane and more user-friendly in the sense that before removing a, such a tweet, there has to be a prior uh, removable, removal notification explaining the action by the social intermediary, then there has to be uh, equitable and reasonable opportunity to be given to the user and a, res uh, a resident grievance officer has to monitor these disputes. Under the DMCA, which is the Digital Millennium Copyrights Act of 1998, the US law, hmm. the notification is post removal, number one. Hmm. Number two, the subscriber can give a counter notification saying that his tweet is not violated, which the Honorable Minister was not told by Twitter. Yes. So while we, look at, yes, while we look at those sequence of events, I'm going to get a word now let from me, Tuhin Sina. Yes. Just give me one second. Sure. I'll come to the clarity issue that you raised. Hmm. Twitter also raised this issue and other social media intermediaries also raised the issue of clarity and FAQs are going to be released by the government. So there is no issue of clarity, etc. The issue of uh, intent and action is there of Twitter and it is okay. clearly flouting the Indian law. Okay, so this is Twitter continuing to say that they will not follow the Indian rules and Indian law. Although they may be saying that we are continuing to engage with the government of the day and that we will at some point make those appointments. But clearly if we look at the action as per this one that has happened currently, it's signaling completely, uh, you know, something different. Tuin Sina, is it also storm in a teacup? The reason why I'm saying is that Shashi Tharoor, who is the head of the Parliamentary Standing Committee, said that his tweet too was deleted because the similar rule or, or act was cited. Even Priyanka Chaturvedi, under, another member of Parliament, has talked about how her content was removed from Facebook citing the same rule. So isn't it time for us to understand the reason why contesting this act becomes important? Well, absolutely. Twitter continues to exercise what uh, what I would call colonial style extraterritoriality for its actions, which needs to be contested by everybody. And I'm glad that Shashi Tharoor has come out in in, uh, in the open and said so. You know, because had he ha had he had the mindset of Rahul Gandhi, he would have taken Twitter's side. So I'm glad all politicians are speaking have finally you know chosen to speak in one voice against it because you need to realize that from being from instead of being the platform of free speech, which Twitter claims itself to be, it has reduced itself to a self-certifying, ostracizing, self-certified, ostr ostracizing uh, tribunal. Hmm. Now, repeatedly, first by not, com uh, uh, first by virtue of its non-compliance in uh, appointing the uh, required officers, and then in by by grossly violating Rule Four by Eight of uh, the intermediaries' guidelines. Twitter has clearly made it known that it is not an intermediary, which means that it is on a suicidal mission, which makes itself vulnerable and liable for all kinds of court cases to be filed against it for, for subsequent uh, okay. defaults which for which it is being shielded right now. Okay. So Twitter needs to introspect and find out if this is the way it wants to carry its operations in India, where its equity is completely you know, uh, yes. marauded by, so by its uh, We have really uh, picked that phrase that was used by Napinai of being on a suicidal path here. Uh, that is what Twitter appears to be doing. Kanishk, look at what all Twitter has done ever since the government said, like all other intermediaries, you also follow the new rules. Um, it went ahead and uh, withdrew the verified blue badge uh, from the verified accounts of Vice President of India, RSS Chief, and several other sung functionaries. What was the message that they were trying to give? I think we are taking it in a different direction. We must understand more about the DMCA guideline, how it applies. The DMCA applies to all companies which are hosted within the US. So companies such as YouTube, Google, Twitter, Facebook, all are hosted within the U.S. So if there is an action taken even outside the U.S. geography, the law will still apply. And clearly, if you look at what Mr. Shashi Tharoor told, was that his account was also deleted, blocked because of the copyright issue. Hmm. And he has clearly cited 
how his account was unlocked as well. The same thing has happened with Honorable uh, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad. And uh, it is just a clear mandate that the DNC is getting hyperactive. Twitter is complying to the US law and they are doing what is they are being told so to they do. Will, they, they will, have, uh, you know, not follow the Indian, ro uh, Indian law, but they will be complying with the US law while operating in India. See, is that how it they works? Have asked for, no, they have asked for more time to comply with the Indian law. They have clearly stated they want to comply to the Indian law. They respect the Indian law. All they have asked for is for more time. It does not mean they are not complying with the Indian law. If they have put a request that they need more time, and then and you none other that, that, right? no, you know, there's a LinkedIn, there is a Facebook, there are other, uh, you know, Snapchat and other platforms, including Instagram. All of them can comply with the Indian law, but they need extra time. Jitin, you will be responding to what Kanishk said. Can I, can I just add? Can yes, I just add? Yes, please, go ahead. Yes, there yes. are other platforms as well, which yes. are not compliant. Okay. Right? Every platform has appointed a third party lawyer. There is Signal, there is Telegram. Uh, why are we not talking about those platforms? Why we only want to go after Twitter? Okay. That's another aspect we should look into. Okay, fine. So why is the focus only on Twitter, Jitin? Is it because this uh, medium... No, no, no. The, 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 the uh, larger argument is also this, that this medium has chosen to take a path of confrontation with the government of the day and is not falling in line as the BJP would want. That is what the opposition is also saying. First of all, the Twitter has not taken a path of confrontation and is not falling in line for BJP. They have taken a path of confrontation with the parliament of India. They are the ones who told parliament that our laws, are, our policies are more superior to the laws passed by our parliament. So it is not BJP or, uh, you know, government, it is parliament which they are challenging. Your sovereign law breaking process what they are challenging. And imagine a company which is regularly flouting legal orders in India, which is refusing to comply with Indian law, is now trying to exercise extraterritorial jurisdiction of U.S. laws and trying to implement U.S. laws in India on Indian users for Indian content. And as Kanish rightly said, and for the first time I agree with him, they are doing this because they are based in U.S., the content is hosted in U.S. And that is why when government of India is now building a policy of data localization, asking these people to open an office in India, asking these companies to appoint resident grievance officers who, who are responsible for compliance with Indian laws, including a compliance officer. This is the reason, and I'm very happy that this is what has happened to Ravi Shankar Prasad, IT minister, and Sashi Tharoor Saham in the past, who is the chairman of IT committee in the parliament. If it had happened to some other MP or an ordinary guy like you and me, this issue would not have found so much of public importance. Now you would realize the pain and harassment thousands of Indians go through this arbitrary opaque policies where their accounts are suspended, locked out, without any notification, without any course hmm. of redress. Hmm. And that is why we needed these officers, needed these reforms in the law, and that is why we need these companies to open a local office in India and localize Indian data for Indian users and protect our sovereignty. Okay. But I am amazed a U.S. company willing to come, you know, defy Indian law in India is now enforcing U.S. laws in India. I mean, nothing could be more hilarious than this. Okay, Kanish, a quick rebuttal from you for 30 seconds and then I bring in other panelists. So, you know, what it goes back to is saying we must have a IT law. We must have a Indian data protection law. And we have been sitting on that data protection law for past two years. Every time we hear, there will be a data protection bill which will be passed and it doesn't come through. So it calls that we must have a data protection law in place. And I agree with Jitin that we must have a local law which, you know, safeguards our people. But let that law come in place. If that law is not there, why do you want to hold these platforms, uh, you know, by neck and then try and say that they fall in line? Get a law in place. Bring a law, a law which also talks about data localization, which clearly highlights okay. what needs to be done. Okay. That's the, that's so is, if if can there I, is I, almost I, a consensus in the political I, class I, that we I, saw in the Parliament Standing Committee, then is it the time, Tuhin Sina, now to bring that law? Well, absolutely. Twitter has no app, uh, no option but to conform to the to the new intermediary guidelines. It, it can dilly dally. It can uh, make all sorts of excuses, but it, uh, eventually Twitter will have no option but to subscribe to Indian laws and data localization is next on our agenda. Hmm. Unfortunately, the machinations of uh, the deep state are very evident in the actions of Twitter by challenging the government of the day in a country as of the size of India, of the size of the population base, using Twitter. Twitter has clearly, you know, shown its bullying intent. 
and we are committed to to dealing with it in a firm way of course i mean we don't have the emergency mindset or else we would have clamped uh, twitter down right away but we will follow the democratic and legal process to ensure that no, twitter but, falls in line but 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 twitter has alleged that it has been forced to withhold free speech in india and i'm looking at what they said on may 27 uh, you know they said well, that they said that uh, indian gov uh, that uh, uh, they have in fact accused the indian government of dangerous overreach that is inconsistent with open and democratic principles and said that it has been forced to withhold portions of legitimate free speech on its platform over fears around the safety of its employees and threats of uh, financial penalties on the penalties. contrary on the contrary it is twitter which is which has made its partisan nature very clear today you need to be a sharjeel imam or a shelja rashid to be a, you know respected by twitter whereas the the blue tick accounts of um, of the honorable vice president of india and mohan bhagwat ji can immediately lose their blue tick for no rhyme or reason so i think the selectivity the malafide selectivity in twitter's approach has been very clear and rest assured and i mean anybody who has been following the incidents of the last year, few months will will vouch for it that twitter is not the apostle of free speech okay. which it claims Fine. to be I'll rather it has been positioning itself as a self certified ostracizing tribunal which it should stop itself from doing because so it's it loses not really all its equity and intermediary it has become a participant as much in this discourse that is happening here nabinai i'll give you the final words um how do you see this chapter unfolding in the next few weeks well uh, you really uh, brought in the uh, most important aspect with the last comment there once an intermediary starts mediating content on its platform hmm. it stops being an intermediary hmm. so the primary risk that twitter runs is of any way not being within that category itself if it starts censoring and mediating the content on its platform the second issue is a lot of legal aspects are being dealt with as if it's black and white hmm. i do not agree with the statements made about the needed but that's a separate topic irrespective of data localization irrespective of where the content lies considering where and how the content is protected under which law is what decides what, what the applicability of the law so merely because you may uh, save the content elsewhere doesn't mean the law of that land only applies hmm. since the copyright is with respect to uh, uh, media which is in india the copyright is dictated by or protected by the laws in india hmm. any kind of protective mechanism that is to be followed has to be that of indian laws hmm. and finally the uh, dialogue went off into data protection and what not the issue here is not about data protection the issue here is about intermediary guidance guidelines compliance hmm. that and is being also that, with that is not happening is, really it is about the law of the land that is not being followed if it is about the server not being localized then why shouldn't indian law of copyright be applied and here it is rule 48 it it may not be as much have that clarity but then certainly there was no information that was given to minister and his office before his account being blocked uh, a quick word from you kanish i mean ansh ansh luthra please yes ansh Yeah, I, I I agree. There is no see Twitter is non-compliant today, and there is no middle ground in law. There is nothing like I am non-compliant, but I am willing to comply. There is either you comply or you don't. Clearly today, Twitter is flouting Rule Four Eight of the IT rules. It is flouting other provisions of the IT rules. Twitter's website today says Jeremy Kensel is the only redressal officer who is sitting in San Francisco. There is no Indian nominated earlier. They nominated a lawyer. Now. with respect to these laws twitter is in clear violation uh, when this free speech uh, issue is raised free speech will have to be judged not by twitter it is an intermediary free speech has to be judged by the courts and it is subject to reasonable restrictions under article 192 okay and hence twitter acting as a judge is no by acting as a judge by labeling content is no longer just an intermediary it does not deserve the the deserve the suraksha kavach under section 79 
of being an intermediary okay. the honeymoon period is over and every tweet is a potential lawsuit all right thank you so much for joining us ansh jitin and snapinai and tuhin and also kanish thank you of course this is a discussion that will be continuing we haven't seen the last in this battle that is uh, going on between the center and the twitter this was about escalating it further with this tweet of the minister being blocked and then unblocked that's all from me thanks so much for watching